We are in beautiful White River Junction, Vermont, and we are at the Junction Fiber Mill, and we're going to meet the owners and find out how fiber is turned into yarn. So come on with me and we'll take a look. Fantastic. How long have you been operating? So we've been operating since February 2021, so a little over a year now. So COVID. You started it during COVID. Oh, yeah. uh, we decided to do this in the middle of COVID. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that actually was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, around June of uh, 2020. So how did that all happen? Well, I think COVID partially inspired it. We were having a moment. I was having a moment of... Um, career uncertainty. I was doing web development previous to this, so working from home, working with clients all over the place, and just wanted to feel a little bit more uh, settled into this Vermont lifestyle and do something physical. And Peg had mentioned a while back that there might be a fiber mill we would be able to purchase. Uh, and it was one of those like over beers joking, haha, wouldn't that be funny to start a fiber mill? So June 2020, about six months later, it kind of sparked again, like, you know what? Let's start a fiber mill. So I went up to Peggy the next day at the farmer's market at her farm's booth and said, hey, would you introduce me to uh, the person you said might have a mill for sale? Yeah, and it wasn't a mill that was on the market, but it was a mill that um, everybody knew about. Yes. But they had stopped doing custom processing maybe four years ago. And when Amanda said, so, mill, I said, well... You don't ask, don't get. I'll, I'll, I'll call the owner and say, you know, would you be interested? And he said, well, I'm listening. And we went up and we, we met with him. And, um, you know, I think pretty quickly the deal was set. And I think in part because the mill owner really loved the idea that the mill would stay in Vermont. Oh, fantastic. And the nice thing about the mill was it for each step of the, of the process, he had brought in the right piece of equipment. And so we were able to buy the entire mill, every single piece of equipment, including the scales and the garbage cans, all at once. And in hindsight, I don't think there's any way we could have done this without having bought an entire mill. Yeah. And what was marvelous is the owner said, look, not only will I make sure you know how to run the equipment, I'm going to make sure you know how to take care of the equipment. And oh, that that's important. Huge, oh, absolutely. Huge. And yeah. make beautiful yarn. And, oh, and yeah. <laughs> well, he was known for the, this amazing yarn. And so when word got around that this mill was going to be back in action, um, the phone started to ring. It oh, was, fantastic. Yeah, it was really cool. So what, what's the demand like for a mill like this? So it's a small mill. Yep. We only have eight bobbins. Yep. Um, so the demand right off the bat was pretty huge because we're sending Worcester uh, mill. There are some woolen mills, but it's a different finish. And even then, there aren't a lot. Yeah. And I actually think that the numbers of people who are getting into raising sheep, you know, there might be a flock of only five or six, has grown rather dramatically. Oh, and I, in part, I think because of COVID. Yeah. I think there's been a huge resurgence of getting back to the land. So our clients are a mix of small farms yep. and then some big fiber farms. Oh, I actually right. think Peg and I kind of represent some of our clients yeah, in yeah, an interesting yeah, yeah. way. So Peggy has how many sheep? Yeah, we went to about 34 Corydale. I get about 230 pounds of really oh. fine Corydale. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. I, I would argue I have one of the finest colored Corydale flocks. Oh, the wow. Because I go to Wisconsin for our ram and I really want the fineness of the fiber. Yep. So that's what I do. And then Amanda has a smaller flock. Yeah, we have an offshoot of their flock. We, right. we got two of your, your sheep a few years back, and that's how we kind of became friends. And then 
we bred them. So we have five sheep. So my husband and I, both kind of tech workers, moved to the area and uh, yeah, have our five sheep that we need custom yarn made. Fantastic. And can you talk about the, the types of breeds of sheep you process here? Oh my sheep? goodness. Boy, we learned, a, you name it, we do it. Although we really? There are some fibers that we don't do, but very popular. Jacob, Finn, oh my Shetland, gosh. Romney, uh, Horn Dorset, we BFL, just BFL, Border Luster, Luster um, Clun Forest. We have a ton of business at Clun Forest. Oh, Forest. really? Yeah. We've done it's Texel. Uh, yeah, we've done some Texel. We've done Merino. Yep. We've done we've done some Cormo. Rambouillet. Yeah. Uh, not so much Rambouillet. I think we've done some mixes. Yeah, so. maybe across. Yeah. I'm not sure there's that many people. I don't know how many people in New England are doing Rambouillet. Okay. Um, some that tea water. Yep. Uh, Coxworth, Coopworth. Oh my God. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. That's been, great. Yeah, it's been pretty wild. And that's been probably one of the more fun aspects, of, especially yeah. his first year in business, was yeah. just every week it was a totally new fiber. So yeah. as a you know knitter turned spinner turned sheep farmers on a small scale, getting our hands into that much fiber and learning and getting to experience it firsthand yeah. is really cool. Very, very wild. So Amanda, you've hinted now that you may not be from this area. So yeah. So what's that? Actually. So yeah. what, what's that all about? So uh, where are you from, and how did you get here? Well, I'm from Wisconsin originally. I went to yeah. college there as well, and then I traveled around for a bit in my early 20s, and was living in New York City for a couple of years, and then met my now husband on a Vermont vacation, and kind of <laughs> lured me here basically. <laughs> And I don't know, I, lo I love this area. I think there's a ton of um, interesting things going on community-wise. I've never lived in a better place. We've just got a fantastic community and a wide age, age range of people here. And um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic place to live. Great. Yeah. And how about and yourself? I've, I've been here, it'll be 10 years um, this year. Um, was in Chicago. And we had gone real quickly. We'd gone on vacation in the San Juan Islands and met 75-year-old Annette raising sheep. And Todd said to her, said to Annette, boy, you're living my wife's dream. And when we left that farm, he said, you know, if you still want to have a sheep farm, I'll go do that with you. Wow. And I was like, you got it. <laughs> and in less than 10 months, we sold our suburban house in Wilmette, Illinois, looked at 40 different properties, found a flock, landed in the most exquisite setting in White River Junction. Oh my and, gosh. And um, we just had 28 lambs. This is our 10th lambing season. Um, it's been wild. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's been absolutely extraordinary. And in the process, I met uh, Amanda at the farmer's market and kind of put just simpatico with the fiber. And I just will never forget when she came into the booth that one day and go, yep, I've decided I, I think a mill is the thing to do. <laughs> From web designer to mill. Like, Let's do it. I'll do it with you. We'll make it happen. So It never would have happened if we had it come to this yeah. together. I think yeah. we're very different people, but yeah. we, I think, have our own strengths that make the business what it is. And yeah, yeah. it's been great. And I should, you know, just to, and to be totally frank, I had a baby a month ago. And so I've what? been on maternity leave. Oh my gosh. This past month. Uh, I had 28 lambs. She had a baby. <laughs> yeah. And I had a baby, I think like the day your last lamb came or yeah. something like yeah. that this year. So anyways, it's just been incredible to have the support of Peggy also while uh, being pregnant, having a baby, having, doing the mill. But, we have, but we, we've, got, we've got the mill under our, our belt, if you will, so that, you know, we kind of knew what was going to sure. go on. And we have a, a part-time person who's an extraordinary fiber person. And it's interesting when you when people hear you have a fiber and they go, do you need any help? Yeah, it's quite yeah. a few people who want to come and volunteer or whatever. But uh, Anastasia joined us now three times, three days a week, and that's been great. My husband just retired; his labor is free, so he's come in yep. to help us. So the mill that's is nice. the mill is still cranking. Um, I was just I'm just back from a, a fiber festival down in New Hampshire, um, you know, spreading the word. So talking to other sheep farms, making people, sure people know if you've got custom wool that needs processing, bring it on in. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. And where are your client clients coming from? Is oh, it it New England. Uh, New England? So there's no question Vermont, New Hampshire. Yeah. But as far away as Martha's Vineyard, upstate New York. Oh wow. Um, yeah, That's people, great. and we we make it pretty clear. You got to come to us to drop it off. Sure. Because we want to hear what your expectations are. We want to yeah. see your fleece. Yeah. And have a conversation if need be about like, oh, there's wood chips. We we don't we can't process it if it's got wood chips. Yeah. So that, you know, people have to be willing to get in the car and they, sure. and they are. Yeah. Um, so that's the way it's, 
That's yeah, terrific. So, so I'd say New England. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Do you want to show us how the magic happens? Absolutely. Yeah. Shall we start where we start? Let's work, let's start where we start. Okay. 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 Fantastic. Right this way. Okay. place in person often we actually put it out on this uh, it's called a skirting table this allows um, you know second cuts and some debris to fall through because it's um, got these slots in it and we'll go through the fleece and just make sure it's appropriate for our mill so that means it has to be under seven ish inches in length um, okay and over two inches in length we also check to make sure it doesn't have a, a under coating of hair, some breeds do, and some people don't sure. know what their breed is. Yeah. 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 We don't have a dehairer here. Um, so we skirt the fleece and get rid of, um, well, I should back up and say we require our customers skirt their fleece before they bring it to us, but even so, some fleeces will still have little bits that we'll just want to get out before they go yep. through our equipment. Then we put it into these big um, mesh laundry bags. Yeah, we are actually, uh, <laughs> it looks like we're frying something here, okay. steam rising up. So we're, we're right in the middle now, I'm scouring, uh, I've got two different orders going right here, right? Three sinks that have um, uh, Corydale actually in it. We put them in five, pound, five pounds of uh, grease weight, roughly per bag. Sure. And we scour it twice. We use um, Echo Scour 305, 20 minutes. We have an on-demand hot water heater, hence the caution, very, yes. very hot yes. sign. Yes. And um, so we scour it twice, we rinse it twice. If necessary, we'll, we'll rinse it a third. Giant potato mashers. To, oh, uh, that's right. And what's great about this, this won't felt. Okay. Yep. You know, everybody worries yep. about felting Absolutely. with the hot water. Yeah. The, this potato masher will not felt the, yep. the fibers. Isn't, so it's just been a great way. And then the other critical piece is the hoist. So that we can easily move it around because when this stuff is wet, it's just brutal. Oh yeah, I so, can imagine. But it all gets rinsed and when it's ready, this one's, uh, uh, I'm gonna rinse it one more time, but it will get dropped into just, it's a basic Maytag washing machine yep. and put it on the spin cycle just to pull it out. Yes. And then there's racks in the back where we set it out to dry yep. and then it's ready to come into the mill. Excellent. So then in the mill, uh, first stop is the picker. That is way over here. So we bag up the dry fleece and we put it through this machine, which is from you know, mid-century uh, America that has, like a lot of our equipment in the mill, been completely refurbished to run off of variable fre uh, frequency drives. Yes. So instead of having to change out a gear every time we want a different speed of uh, something, we can just um, turn the dials. The picker is kind of set it and forget it though, and it's actually the fastest of our processes here. So we take the fleece, we feed it in, this is moving, um, and it goes into a big roller with like some very dangerous medieval looking teeth on it that's going super fast, it's called the feeder. Then it goes up through this uh, metal arch um, and gets blown and fluffed. Mm -hmm. And then into the back here, there's a, another paddle going that sort of distributes the fiber and it falls into these big laundry bins. Um, it kind of just looks like little clouds of wool. So the, the purpose of this machine is to pick out the vegetation as well as to fluff it up um, in order to get it through the carter without yeah. causing jams. Open up the locks. Sure. But it kind of comes out like cotton candy. Yeah. 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 Uh, and some, as you know, some fleece are more lock driven than others. Yes. And those are the ones you really want to make certain. And Sometimes we put it through twice yeah. um, just to make sure. Because we really want to prepare it well for its trip through the carter because that machine is not fun to... Uh, to declog. Yeah. And you said you were a semi woolen shop, so can you explain? Semi worsted. Semi worsted shop. Can you explain? Yeah, that? absolutely. So, what qualifies a, a, a worsted shop would be using a comb instead of a carpet. Yes. So, those are giant. They take up like a space, I think, as big as this, and there's very few of those in the country. Um, so we use a carter, which is much more compact. This one is um, beautiful Romella. It's only about I don't know, 10, 15 years old. Um, it's a beast. It's it's an incredible machine. Yeah. Uh, so the fleece comes off of the carter and it's still a little bit um, unaligned. It kind of has some sure. fibers going every which way. 
So we take that fiber as roving, and we'll show you the rest of the machines, but we, we work to get those fibers aligned, yep. which turns it into sort of a worsted looking end product yep. rather than to the, a to the pin drafter. Yep. The pin drafter is our secret weapon. Sure. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if that answers. It does. It does. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so you want to talk about the part of that then? Well, we set out a pound, and as the conveyor belt goes through, we add in half pound increments, and this is where we begin weighing, and in all the processes that continue, we're always weighing to, so that we know what's the quantity that we're dealing sure. with. So this is the beginning of trying to have it organized by going in in half pound increments. And if you come around to the other side of the carter... And where are you weighing at? Where is uh, that? This is oh, right very there. high tech. It doesn't Excellent. get more high tech than this. And those are often the most reliable. So it's, uh, so it's right on there. Start yep. with a pound and then half pound. And we're just pulling it out of the laundry sure. basket and weighing it and, and putting it on. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, and we, you know, a lot of times we're blending a bunch of different fibers together. Or sometimes yes. we're blending in um, some comb top into certain fibers to give a little bit more crimp. So we do try to sort of mix it as we're feeding the picker. Yep. But when we're, when we're coming over here and we're grabbing fiber for the carter, we like to sort of try to, you know, we're trying to mix it at every part of the process. Yeah. You know, when it, by the time it gets through the pin drafter two times, it's a very even thing. So we'll see, you know, coils of roving that you'll see gradations of gray oftentimes. And by the time it comes off the pin drafter, those colors are just really blended and it's right. just a solid gray. But um, so just to explain that in every step we're sort of blending as well. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So on the back side of the carter, which is caged for a reason, <laughs> it's a little lethal. Um, we, it's coming, a lot of times, well, it's coming off the carter by, um, this is a docker and it's vibrating rapidly. There's a compressor over in the corner that allows us to have a gentle stream of air. And that allows us to come through here and that then is coming off as roving mm -hmm. and it rises up and then descends into this can coiler. If, if the piece of equipment is green in the mill, it's from the 40s. Yes, this is a can coiler from the 40s and what's cool about the can coiler is as it's filling, it descends uh, down yes. and it gets organized kind of like um, a Carvel ice cream. Yep. I've got a bag here. Oh, and this is actually a good demonstration of how yeah. it's still not quite blended evenly coming off the carter. So you, right. here you can see the different colors of gray as you look down the, right. the so ice this, cream cones. Yeah, so this is come off the um, the carter and um, is only it's all it's done has been carded. So if so, you're a hand spinner, this is perfectly fine for you to work with. This is, right. and we do sell roving as well. People can choose to get their fiber process nice. yeah. into roving. Yep. Um, so you can hand spin this. For our spinner though, it's not, it's nowhere near um, even enough um, right. to make really nice yarn. And, it's, and as, as Amanda said earlier, the fibers are kind of going like this. Sure. And we want to line them up all pointing in the right direction. Yeah. So the next step then is to weigh these, this roving out into even stacks and they go over to the pin drafter, which okay. is where we'll hit next. Yeah, this is, we love all of our machines, but this one is this really is, special. Yeah, this is amazing. Have yeah. you named them or are they? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, yeah, so we put the piles of the roving that we weighed out onto these uh, trash cans and then we take the tails of the roving up um, all together so you can imagine six or eight yep. different tails of roving coming awesome. through here and then we feed it into this machine which makes a clickety clack sound as these they're called faller bars but they look like cones if you come around you can see they operate on a continuous loop and these work to align and draw out sure. fibers yep then it passes through um, a roller and comes into the can coiler. Same exact thing as what happens on the carter. Yep. So we do that one time and that is what we would sell as pin drafted roving, which mm -hmm. is like amazing for a hand spinner yeah. to work with. Yeah. Well, but yeah. for our uh, spinner, we actually take that stack of roving, we weigh it out into six or eight stacks again and we do the whole process again, which just makes it even more, um, you, you know, even, even aligned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's the two things it's doing is it's lining it's lining those fibers up like this, but it's also assuring that this two yards weighs the same as the next sure. two yards. Yeah. So that when you get that finished uh, yarn, it's very uniform. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that this machine does is sort of helps to control the weight of the roving, so the yards per pound. So for certain fibers, 
it's coming off the carver, carter quite different than others based on the amount of crimp sure. usually. So we often have to play with the number of piles that are, we're feeding in. Um, this has about a six to one draft. So if we put six in, we expect the roving to be the same sure. on the way out, but the, the nature of the fiber sort of affects that. So if we're working with a super, super crimpy fiber like Merino, we may have to put it into three or four piles rather than six to get it to draft enough to spin well. Yeah. So then we go to the spinner. Yeah, and um, so we're, again, we're gonna weigh out stacks and we have eight, uh, eight bobbins. So we'll do eight stacks of um, the pin drafted roving here, getting ready to, to do the, the single one. I don't know if it's useful to see what pin drafted. I'll show you and you can decide if it comes. So this is, uh, this is actually a Jacob. Oh my gosh. And this has been pin drafted twice. And if you hold it up, I don't know if you can see that in the light, that if you come around and shoot it that way through the window, you can see the fibers are all marching in the proper way. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, doesn't it look nice? And furthermore, the, you know, if you're doing gray, which often comes from a mixture of like black and white, you can see as you look yeah. down the stack, this is all the same color. There might be fibers individually that are white or black in here, but after two trips to the pin drafter, yeah, it's, it's well blended. Your skein's gonna be all one color. Great. So imagine this then weighed out and we have eight stacks and then it'll go up and over this roller and the next roller and then we'll come around and start spinning. Fantastic. So here's a bobbin. So if we were getting ready to spin, we would have the bobbin with this lead on it. It came over the rollers. It's gonna descend behind the back roller, come through this piece behind the front roller, and then there's a traveler on this piece, and then it's up in here. And when the machine is running, this leader will catch that fiber and draw it down, and then you're off to the races. Yep. The key on this is the master control here. So what you want, you've got your variables. How much does it weigh? What's the weight of the woven coming in? Mm -hmm. What kind of yarn did you want to have made? Did you want to have it you know, light, heavy? So we'll, we'll figure out what's the grist, how many yards per pound, and yep. work back on our Excel spreadsheet. What are, what should these be moving at? Sure. So the variables, how fast is the back roller spinning? How fast is the front roller spinning? And how fast is this is the, um, the spindle turning? Makes, and all that's makes all sense. done here. Yeah. And we run tests and weigh it until we've got it. Then once the test is done, then we load it all up and we're off to the races. So you single ply it, put it up in the rack, do it all over again, yep. put it up in the rack. If it's a three ply, you're doing a third round. Then you're t you're doing you're de determining what's the twist for the ply. Sure. And critically, you're throwing the switch so that this will turn in the opposite direction yeah. when you're plying, and we'll take it down from the racks and start plying. It's it's time consuming. It takes about a, if you're doing ten pounds, it takes about an hour for each of the singles and about an hour and a half for the plying. Mm -hmm. So. It's, and part of that time we should mention for the plying is at our mill we do the best that we can to utilize all of the fiber. Sure. So what that means is sure. inevitably even though we've worked hard to make sure that the fiber is all the same weight per yard coming off the pin drafter, some of these uh, spindles are going to finish up sooner than others. So as we're plying we like to splice in the ones yeah. that are um, still going so that we sense. utilize every little bit of that single ply yarn that we can. Uh, which takes a lot of time. Um, yeah. yeah. But that's great. That's, that's terrific to hear. And then uh, now we've got it on the bobbins. Now we need to take it off the bobbin. And actually, we've got a fun yarn right now uh, that we're... Oh, I've been eyeing it. Yeah. So <laughs> if you're familiar with Jacobs, those oh, yeah. are the little guys. They're white yeah. with black splotches. Yes. Well, there's a terrific farm, very beloved in the area, called Hogwash Farms. And they raise Jacobs. And we get all their fleece. We pay for the shearer to shear it. And then on that skirting table, we're separating the black from the brown. Yeah. So this actually was the brown. We single plied, we single spun that, then we spun the white, and then we plied it together to get That's this exactly. ragged yarn. I'll show yeah. you the finished is right here. We're in the middle of 
So here's how you can see it's, it's coming off. So this is from the same flock, right? Oh, and that's cool. why you can it's put gorgeous. it together. The, the fibers are talking to each other. They're not yeah. like incompatible. They're right. very compatible. Yeah. And that's it's fun different. to have this, uh, um, oh, what's the word for it? Not variegated. But, Ragged. Uh, yeah, marled. Is well, it marled when it's two different flies together? Yeah, marled or I, yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's fun to have a marled natural yarn. You know, it we didn't dye, you know, the singles, but. Uh, I actually love dyeing this as well. Because yeah. Yes, because then it comes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. harmonious yeah. colors. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is uh, the skein winder. Um, you can see it has a, uh, pays homage to the mill that we uh, bought all this equipment from, Hampton Fiber Mill. Um, so the skein winder, we figure out uh, based on what we were aiming to spin, say it was 800 yards per pound, well then we're going to do four yard or four um, skeins to the pound. So we'll divide 800 by four, that's 200 yards per skein, and then we'll set this machine and take off 200 yards. And we'll do a test to make sure we did actually spin what we set out to spin sure. so that the weight of our skeins is what we want it to be. And then we just... Um, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, basically. We're, we're just start starting the machine, letting it go to the 200 yards, we're tying it off, and then that's your skein. So these these are skeins that have um, been rinsed and dried. This. this is fantastic. Yeah, this is the prototype. Oh, I love this. Uh, and, and we have our friend, our friend John to thank. He's our like mill angel. Maybe just put two on? Yeah, I'll put two on. So it can hold six. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And we, up until we had this machine, do you want to show? We were doing, you know, like Oh, this. I know. Yeah, I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so basically you put your skeins on, and then, let's see, how many are we doing on these? Seven? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you just simply, you have your perfect, uh, Yeah, that's great. Perfect crawler. Yeah. Fantastic. So this has helped us tremendously because we can kind of be doing this while we're pin drafting yeah. and work our way six games at a time. And it gives us a nice uniform finish and it's that just so fun. Awesome. This guy John showing up with it, it was such a treat. That's awesome. Yeah. Really nice. So that's the end. That's how our customer, if they're having their yarn processed by us, we want to give them a product that they can put on the shelf and start to sell if yep. that's what they want. So it's been rinsed and hanged and, and ready to go. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, this was great. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. We, so our primary business is custom processing for area sheep farms. But one of the things that we came to realize, I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago, is that we should probably set aside a little bit of the mill's capacity to develop our own line of yarn. Sure. And, um, it's worked out really well. It just helps the bottom line because, as, as you can see from this tour, processing wool is very labor intensive. Yeah. So we this is a pro, this will be Junction Fiber Mills Farm Fresh yarn. Yeah. But then we also started to play around, and I don't know if you're, if if it's of interest. If you look behind you, you'll see a bag of commercial comb top that we dyed. I saw that. Yeah. So we are dyeing the commercial comb top. We pin draft it, and that's the secret weapon. It elongates the color and one bag is five pounds, the other bag is five pounds, and we've created about 18 different colorways that are just knockout. Oh They're wow, that's really great. Cool. We call it making tracks, and um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's our own little uh, variegated marled yarn. Oh, that's um, fantastic, yeah, that's great. It's done Which has been really, well. really fun, because I think, you know, like Peggy said, the pin drafter is the requirement for making that sort of yarn, so not a lot of mills have the pin drafter, so we figured, Go go to town. Yep. Play yeah. With it. So, so so where can people find you on social so, media? Yeah, we're at Junction Fiber Mill on Instagram, um, on Facebook. I think just search Junction Fiber Mill. I'm not as good with Facebook, but uh, but she's nailed Instagram. <laughs> and then we're also we have a website as well, JunctionFiberMill.com. And, you have and an that's where our store? shop. Yep. 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 Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Where all the things like this marled yarn will be there. Making tracks is there. Yeah, and important to note that we are a working factory, basically, so I think a lot of folks uh, who come to the area would really love to come in and see our equipment in progress, but we just, we don't have a retail shop here. Sure. We just do e-commerce business um, because, except for special events, which we put on our Instagram, it's, when we've got this machinery running, it's very, very loud, pretty dangerous that we can't. Yes, it's, oh, it's noisy, sure. very noisy. Yeah. But I'll tell you what's, what's interesting, because we're in downtown with this storefront, People, people have been kind of like, what's going on there? So we did an open house, 
And it was very cool to have people from the Upper Valley kind of say, I want to see what you're doing in there. Oh, so yeah. we said, that's interesting. So we've been kind of once a month-ish opening it up, letting people get a, a tour of the mill, and then seeing some of the yarn that they can buy at the door. Oh, fantastic. And the reception has been so cool, including people, some, some gentlemen have come in and go, you know, I used to work at a mill, because this was big time mill oh, uh, yeah. area. Yep. And there's a lot of retired people who spent many, many hours behind the bobbins. Yes. Um, and uh, very, very fun to see them come in and sort of relive what they oh, were Oh, that's doing. great. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, just thank you so much. This is, well, this thank is absolutely you. wonderful. Thank you for coming to visit. And wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Thank you.